talk about the calendar types. And my name is Lau, and I'm a software developer. I really like Elixir. How many of you like Elixir? Whoa. Yeah. 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 Um, and I've done some uh, open source, a lot of Elixir stuff. And one of the things I've done is uh, a calendar library and also a uh, time zone uh, TZ data library. And I have a blog where uh, I've written a lot about time and date and that kind of stuff. You see, it's creativedeletion.com. And I'm also on Twitter and GitHub. So first of all, what is a type? Um, there are a lot of definitions of it. One of them is that it's a, a set of possible values. Um, and why do we want types? Why even have them? So again, there's a lot of reasons to have types, a lot of opinions. Uh, one reason is that, for instance, if you have 5 divided by 2, you get something meaningf meaningful. Uh, but if you have 5 divided by Orlando, uh, that doesn't make so much sense. So um, in that case, we want errors. And uh, that, that's a good reason to have types, that if something goes wrong, uh, we want to know about it. Um, and I'm going to talk about explicit data. Uh, do any of you know what this is? Well, it, it isn't anymore. Um, that was the, the Mars Climate Orbiter. Um, and it went along towards Mars on a 286-day journey. And then it failed. And why was that? Because there were some people that were supposed to send data about um, how it was going about some thruster data, and they used pound seconds instead of newton seconds. And I, I'm used to the metric system, but I really like the imperial system because it's very convenient. I like the whole thing with like feet and inches based on your body. So for instance, my height, I found out just recently that um, converted to the imperial system, it's uh, one foot, one leg, one torso, one neck, and one head. So, so it's, it's very easy. I like that. Um, but it's not really necessarily that important uh, what units you use, as long as you know which units you're using. Um, and in, in physics class in school, I was taught that you always need to carry your units with you when you do calculations. So at the end, do you know what you... Uh, what you have, because um, if you just have numbers, uh, at some point something might go wrong. You don't know what you end up with. So imagine if um, they were probably just sending numbers, but imagine if uh, with this example of the spacecraft they'd send numbers and the unit, uh, maybe as a tuple like this in Elixir, or maybe as uh, a struct. Um, and then you could do pattern matching. And so imagine that uh, you required to have Newton seconds, and then you, you sent uh, pound seconds instead, you get an error, right? So imagine if you had, they had been doing testing with just integers, it would all work, and they were like, this is ready to go to space. Uh, but if they used this instead, maybe they would have seen the error. Um, because uh, one thing is to have something in documentation, another thing is to have code. Um, so with pattern matching and testing, uh, you get errors, which is good. I really like errors. Um, it's a bit like, you know, like pain. It's not so nice, but if you have your hand on a hot plate, it can help save your hand. Um, so there are a lot of units of time and date. We have years. We have years and months. And we have times. We have date and times together, and date and time together in a specific location. So how is that handled in computers? Often, um, 
for instance, in Unix, there's just one type, which is a date, a time, in a specific time zone, which is always UTC. So if you have a date, it gets jammed into this concept, which is a date time in a specific time zone. If you have a time, it gets jammed into the same concept again. And even if it's a daytime, you always get that um, time zone attached to it. So then you run into the problem of um, if you have, you want to encode just a time, and you ask afterwards what year is that time in. Uh, and there might be some random year that was never there in the data originally, but somehow it got into your system because it has to be there because it's kind of forced into this concept of a daytime, uh, even though it was just a time. And the same thing for just dates. I wrote also a blog post that everyone knows what a date is except programmers because um, for most people, including the dictionary, a day can be a time, sorry, it cannot be a time, it can be, um, see even, I'm confused. So you have, you have a day can be a year, a month, or a year and a month, or a year and a month, and a day of the month. Um, but it doesn't really have a time. Um, so I think, in, in general, in computer science and programming, a lot of these concepts get confusing because they're made more confusing than they really are. Um, so instead of having just one, uh, one type, uh, we can have multiple ones. Uh, and so I made this uh, library, the calendar library, where there are four different types. And you could have uh, many different ones. You could have, for instance, a type just for a year. Um, but in this case, uh, there's no type for just a year. For that, you would have to just use an integer. And, um, but the ones that are there are ones that are commonly used, and um, they also fit well with, for instance, uh, databases. In a database, a date has a year, a month, and a day of the month. So let's look at them. Uh, yeah, so in, in 2014 you had, in calendar, uh, you have and still have these, uh, these types. Uh, a date, a time, they're pretty simple, uh, like what you would expect them to be. And then an naive day time is a combination of a date and a time. And then you have a, a, a date time, so let's see here. Date, time. And they also have a microsecond. And here's the combination. So the, the date time is special. Uh, a date time is uh, the result of a calculation where you also have time zones into it. So let's say, what is the time right now um, in, in uh, New York, which is the, the, the time zone we're in right now here in Florida as well. Um, it's like a, an ephemeral uh, struct that is based on also the current uh, time zone rules. Um, so in addition to what you have in an IE daytime, you have a time zone, a U2C offset, a standard offset, and a zone abbreviation. Uh, so the, the reason I say it's ephemeral is because the rules can change. So you, you ask a library for a daytime, and, and with the current rules, the standard offset uh, are in, in one way, but if you uh, do the same calculation in 10 years, maybe it's different because the rules have changed. So something about the, the naming. Um, in, in some languages, you have something called local, for instance, in Java. This is the, the description of a local date in, uh, date in Java. So for instance, if you have 2007, December the 3rd, 
that is a local date. Um, so why not call a date in Elixir the, a local date? Well, it turns out that this is another case of things being more confusing that they should be, because actually local means something that belongs to a particular area or neighborhood, or something that, that is, has something else, then it's, it's not global, right? It's, it's local. So then if you ask yourself 2007-1203, which area does that belong to? Yeah, I don't know either. Like, right? It, it, it's 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 not uh, a local thing. It's just a, a more like a global date it exists without any tie to a particular place. So that is why it is called just a date. So here's a, a quiz. Um, does anyone? Want to try? There are no uh, lifelines. <laughs> Anyone want to get? It's a it's a trick question, and then the hands went down. <laughs> so, uh, right. So a lot of a lot of bees here. Um, the answer is that uh, we can't know what the answer is here. And what, why is that? Because we do not know uh, what time zone it is. So Unix, Unix time is always in UTC. So if you have this string of 1970, January 1st at midnight, um, you don't know what the Unix time is, the equivalent of that, unless you know what time zone it is in. Yeah, so, so you, like, you like errors, I like errors too. So um, the way it, it works right now in, in Elixir 1.3 is like this. You can do this, and you get an error because it, it, it doesn't match. If you have, this is na naive. Uh, I'm gonna, you're going to see more of that. Like, this is a sickle for a naive daytime. And um, it doesn't match if you try to pass that into this daytime function. It needs a, a date time that has, as we saw before, it has time zone information. So these are the structs that are built into Elixir 1.3. Um, so they're uh, pretty much they're almost the same, uh, but the difference is that there's no uh, calendar prepended in the module names. That, that's um, one of the main differences. Um, and we also have sickles for date, for time, and for naive date time. And you might notice that there's no sickle for date time. So we have it just for the three of these. Uh, so one of the, the changes from the calendar library to the, to the structs that are built into Elixir 1.3 is that we have this field called calendar, uh, which is so that if you want to use a different calendar than the ISO calendar, for instance, a Coptic calendar or something like that, you could, you could use these same structs. But uh, there's no functionality for that built into Elixir. So some external library would have to, uh, to do that kind of calculation. But, the good news is that most of the world, uh, except like one country, uses the ISO calendar, at least for business purposes. So for, for most of us, we don't have to, um, most of us don't have to uh, use any other calendar. So another thing we have is microseconds. That is, and there was that in the calendar library as well, but this is a new thing where you have um, a tuple of two integers. So the first element is uh, the number of microseconds, and the second one is the, um, the significant fractional seconds. 
So a cool thing about that is, uh, for instance, if you have uh, here the first example, you have point one two three four, and in many other libraries, um, maybe the result you wouldn't know that you only knew about these um, first four uh, decimals. So it would be converted to point one two three four zero zero zero. Um, or two zeros. Uh, and, and in the second example, you see that when you parse this string, again, we only have dot one, and we don't get dot one zero zero zero. So the way it works is if you, if you get the microsecond uh, field, you can see that this is how it works. So in the second example, for instance, you have uh, two significant uh, decimals. So that's why it says two. Uh, there's 100,000 uh, microseconds and then two significant digits. So um, in order to, with, with the sickles and the, and the built-in modules in Elixir, you can do some things. Um, but you can't do much with time zones. For that, you need, uh, you, need you should add this uh, to your dependencies. And then you can, uh, for instance, you can do stuff like uh, converting a naive daytime to a daytime. So if you remember, remember the example from, the, um, from our little quiz, that we didn't have uh, a daytime to pass to the daytime to Unix function. But in this case, we explicitly tr uh, transform this naive daytime to a daytime, in, and we say it's UTC. Like, if you know that what you have here is UTC, uh, you can transform it, um, and then functions that only accept uh, daytimes that are not naive daytimes, they can use it. So here's an example of a function that's built in. So we see there's no calendar prepended to the module. And we can uh, pretty much the only thing, the only way you can create uh, a daytime with the built-in library as of now is from a Unix integer. Uh, but if we, uh, if we then have calendar, uh, there's a way to shift that that daytime to a different time zone. So if you can notice that um, the hour here was uh, 17 hours. And then when we shift it, it's 13 hours. And then here's an example of uh, how you can uh, you can combine combine the different uh, libraries. You can like the building library returns um, a daytime, and then you can shift it. And then because you get the same struct back, you can uh, use a, a function that, again, expects uh, daytime, and you, um, you, see, uh, you uh, get uh, a string back. And here's another example where you have uh, a string for time. And, and uh, yeah, you, again, you can notice that there's combination of the different, uh, different modules. And here's uh, a sigil. We can have, uh, ask if it's Friday. And here we can uh, compare if uh, today is before or tomorrow. And another example, if you want. More examples, and here is um, you can get the day today when you provide uh, a time zone. A thing uh, you should notice is when you ask what what date is it today, you could have like a function that just says uh, today, and then there's a default. Uh, but that's not really a good idea because um, if you don't, uh, if you're not aware of of uh, 
what you have, like if you're not aware of the time zone, if you're not aware what the default is, you might get confused, so that's why it takes a specific time zone. And then here's yet another example, and this is um, where you can add dates to uh, a date from a signal, and then call it here. So what about getting a, a time zone of the user? There's, uh, there's a bunch of ways to do that. The thing is, uh, for instance, if you're in Phoenix, you, um, and you have some web app with the JavaScript, you might use, uh, what you can get is you can get an offset, but JavaScript doesn't really have a way to get the canonical time zone of the user. Um, there are some libraries that uh, can get, can, can guess, make a qualified guess about it. So what you want is, for instance, something like America slash New York, instead of, let's say, uh, minus uh, four hours. So there's a bunch of ways. You can also, um, you can use those uh, JavaScript libraries. And hopefully, I hope that in the future, um, that in JavaScript is gonna be a standard where you can just say what is the, the time zone of the current user. Um, another thing you can do is you can, um, you can use uh, like geo IP. So there are ways that you provide an IP address and you get back uh, uh, IANA time zone ID, again, like America slash New York. Um, so if you have a web app, you could try to do all these guesses, but really the best way is to have a drop down, and the user can choose, um, can choose the time zone. So persistence in Excel. So Jose uh, Valim told me that in the plan is that in uh, version 2.1, the, the, these structs are going to be um, built into Ecto. Um, but for now, what you can do is use the, the Collecto library. Um, so you add that, and then for the for the types in your schema, instead of having, for instance, ecto.date, you can have collecto.date. And there's a special, there's a special thing for, uh, if you use Postgres, you can have a special Postgres collecto type where there's a composite type that has, um, this is for date times, that has the time zone the local time, and then an offset. Uh, and the good thing about that is that um, if there are any changes to the rules, let's say uh, for this, that this um, talk was scheduled uh, a year ago, and in the meantime there had been changes to the rules, if you had used this type, uh, it would still go and ask uh, when you retrie retrieve this from the database again, after use, the rules have changed, it, will, it would use the new rules. Um, so that is what I would recommend to do. Um, so the, the main takeaway here is that you want to uh, select a type that fits the data you have. So if you have some uh, data that comes in, you want to preserve as much information about that as possible, but you don't want to make up new things. Um, and, and one thing about the, the new types is, for instance, one thing I would like to see is that, if, let's say you have a, a log. Currently, the logging in Elixir uses tuples, but it doesn't have any time zone inf information. So you could configure your logging to be local time or to be UTC. But when you actually get that, um, that information, you don't know what it is. So this might be passed on to your application uh, a, bunch, a bunch of different places, and then you, you have a function uh, that receives this, and you don't know what time zone it is in. So that means that you can't do, a, there's a lot of things you can't do. 
you can't compare it to another time and see what happened first, right? So in this case, I would like to have uh, Logger use, always use UTC. Like one, one thing I, I think that uh, people that work in, in uh, computer science, especially sys admins and also programmers, uh, you should all know what the time is in UTC and all set the service to UTC. Like one thing is if you have, for instance, you schedule a, a, a talk or schedule a conference, uh, you can't expect people to use UTC, and, and I, I wouldn't want to either. I think time zones are, are very useful. Um, but for, for things that happen on computers, uh, you, you would want to use UTC because of the issues that if you use, let's say, you have a cron job in, in, uh, in local time, you have your server set to something else in UTC, your cron job might never run, it might run twice. Um, so, come back to the Elixir logs. Uh, I hope that uh, in the future they will be in the native uh, daytime type, and then you can do all kinds of things. You, like you have in your logs, you can actually compare it to other daytimes, and you can find out where it actually was uh, when it actually happened. So, uh, the whole idea of having these structs in Elixir is that, for instance, in Ecto, you can use the same type as in other, uh, in other libraries, and it can all work together. So the, in the, speaking about the future of um, these uh, of calendar types in, in um, Elixir, you can see that right now there's, the functionality is kind of limited, and you need an external library. The hope is that in the future, in future versions of Elixir, there's going to be uh, a way to have time zone data uh, and time zone data functionality shipping with Elixir. Either you would have to add uh, the time zone data library or it, it would ship with uh, Elixir. But if you, um, right now you could use the, the calendar library and um, it should be, uh, in the future, uh, an easy transition when it gets, uh, when it, if it hopefully gets uh, built in um, this kind of functionality. So. Do you happen to know off the top of your head why the logger is with milliseconds, not microseconds? Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a very good example. Um, yeah, actually, at first I did some start doing some code to handle uh, those structs or sorry those uh, tuples, and then I was confused because Ecto used microseconds and Logger used milliseconds. Uh, but that that's a very good example of uh, why it's these new um, types are good because you could use either naive daytimes or daytimes, and at least the 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 micro, the whole micro millisecond thing would be solved. Yeah, it's just using for a Right. Um, so we have some uh, extra time, and I would love to answer uh, any questions. Before we move on to the questions, let's just give a big round of applause. <laughs> right. Questions. The country that does not use the calendar of the rest of the world, is that Thailand with the Buddhist calendar, or is there another one that I don't know about? Uh, yeah, I, th I think it might be Ethiopia. That's, I think that's the one I was thinking about. Um, to correct myself, I think they do use the same calendar as we do, but the year is, they add 500 something to the year because they count it since the year of Buddha's death, I believe. Okay. Thailand, so I guess. Yeah, I guess it's not Thailand. Yeah, so, so there are a lot of, there are a bunch of places that have other calendars than the ISO calendar, but for business purposes, basically the entire world when doing uh, international business, they use the ISO calendar. So, and sometimes you use, I mean, even, uh, like in, in uh, for 
like for many holidays, they are calculated based on lunar calendars or other things, but still in, in um, daily life for many of the other things, we use the, the ISO calendar. Hi. Um, Hi. Uh, first, I just want to say thank you for working on this. I know this isn't like the most obviously sexy thing, but it's so painful without your work. Um, so the question, though, is you mentioned um, the, that there was an ecto adapter, like the Cal ecto adapter yeah. for Postgres. Is, does that apply to MySQL too, or is that Yeah. Else? So yeah, the, um, Calecto works for all the databases. It's just that there's this one special case where if you want to save uh, a daytime, like a daytime that has the, like the daytime type you have in, in, in Elixir that has all this, um, the time zone information with it, you can use this type. So if you don't use Postgres, what you can do is uh, you're kind of uh, forced to save the save it as a naive daytime, and then what you can do is you, along with that you can save the the time zone. So you can use it. Um, yeah, you you can use it with uh, any of the the, the databases. Sure. Uh, I just want to say real quick, uh, Fred Hebert's talk at uh, Erlang Factory this year, History of Time, was awesome. Um, it goes over all that stuff about lunar calendars and, and all right. that stuff. So if you yeah, get a chance to watch it, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, also, um, if you're more interested in this kind of stuff, you can also see, I did a talk uh, last year, uh, and it's on, it's on YouTube, and I also talk about stuff with, like uh, atomic clocks and and planets and stuff. Still have, still have nightmares uh, from the things I learned from Lau's talk uh, last year, but it's well worth looking into. Anyone else? More questions? See a hand going up. Hi. Uh, Hi. I've been using Timex in combination with MySQL and ran into a number of problems when doing tests, especially with, with microseconds. Mm -hmm. Because I uh, take a date, save it in the database, and when uh, getting my record out again, it would have lost microseconds. Does Calicto offer any help here, or? Uh, yeah, what, what you can do is when you, um, if you use Calicto, the way you solve that is there's uh, an option uh, where you say, um, that you want to save uh, the fractional seconds, and then that gets saved into your database and you get them back again. Yeah, in my case, I don't want them. You, you don't want it? I don't want them in the database, but uh, so the value that's returned from the database has no microseconds, but the value that I initially sent to the database had microseconds, and on comparing them, of course, my test would fail. Okay. So you you ha you save something with microseconds, but you don't want them to be saved, or you well, uh, well, very simple. I create, uh, I just take the, for example, the current time. Yes. I save it to the database, and later on in my tests, I get the record out of the database and verify whether the date is the one that I send. But the date that I send had microseconds, and the one that I get from my SQL has no microseconds, so my test fails. Right, yeah, in this case, um, it should, if you configure it to save the microseconds, you get, you have them both, uh, both places, so they should match. Yeah, but it's a database that's used in also in the real system, and they're not allowed to have the microseconds for other reasons, so I was just wondering if there was a way to get rid of the microseconds. Uh, yeah, there are, you, you can uh, ask me afterwards, yeah. and, I'll, and, and in general, uh, Anyone also that wants to uh, talk to me about this stuff, uh, find me afterwards and, and ask me a question. I think we have time for another question. Okay then. Big hand or close.